She's at a place in her life where peace is a priority and negativity cannot exist. She's no longer matching energy. She's simply removing herself from any situation that doesn't vibrate her soul. So if you start moving funny, she's moving on. coming to you all from doing that team of news she's an icon she's a legend and she is the moment what's up my fina loves it's miss fina d coming to you all from vn team and news most of you are aware of the diddy and cassie situation and everything that's going on if you are someone who are new here and you have no clue i have linked the videos in the description below click the very first link and the second link to watch all of the videos i've done to cover this story but in summary cassie filed a lawsuit accusing diddy of a lot of things diddy denied everything that she listed in her lawsuit but still settled the lawsuit then other people came out and sued diddy he denied those claims as well but then a few days ago cnn released a video of diddy physically assaulting cassie okay on the screen are a few documents explaining some of the things that happened to Cassie. Diddy then released a video apologizing about what happened. He wasn't able to say Cassie's name because in their lawsuit, they both agreed to never say each other name. And then after Diddy apology video, Cassie then came out and released a statement. So that's where we are. Now, after Cassie's statement, of course, the outpouring of love was real. You had Fallon. Thank you for your courageous words of wisdom and support. You are a true hero. God bless you throughout your healing journey. Now, to hear me read Cassie's statement, uh, listen to Diddy apology video and all of those things that I just mentioned, you can click those links in the description below. The reason why I quickly ran through it and summarized that way is because most of you are aware of the story and I want to get to what I put in a title, but I've included those links in the description below for you all to go and watch those videos in details. For those of you who are not caught up on the story. Now, while all of this was happening, other conversations was happening on social media about violence against women. And one of the clips that resurfaced was the clip of Kenya Moore, Facial Parks, Sheree, and her ex-husband in the van and what Bob did and said to Sheree in that van and Kenya's reaction to what he did in that van and this conversation also started because a lot of cassie friends started releasing videos and statements and things like that so you had people like okay great you are her friend and you're releasing videos and statements and all of that but where were you when she needed you the most and what people are forgetting is diddy is still in a way financially powerful but back then, he was even more powerful because none of this information was out there. People now feel like they have a voice to speak. And if Diddy had so much power to hide a video like the one we saw from CNN, imagine other moments that were hidden and alleged things that happened behind the scenes to people who attempted to help. You also have to remember that Cassie kept going back because she was in fear of her life and she felt like she had to keep going back. I even heard that after Diddy did all of that to her, when she was finally allowed to leave, she tried coming back allegedly to apologize to him because she felt like apologizing to him was going to make it stop. And that allegedly, because security was aware of what happened, they turned her away and told her absolutely not go back home. Allegedly. There was also a statement in one of Cassie's court documents that one of her friends that did try to help her, allegedly Diddy people, had her hanging over a balcony. 
that's one of the scare tactics that they use. So that's why some of her friends did not speak out or speak up publicly. So due to this conversation, it led to other conversations about women that do step up in the moment to defend people regardless if they are cool or not. And Kenya Moore name came up in that conversation. And you all remember this van scene happened after Sheree just mocked Kenya about her own story of domestic violence and said that if the man that she was dating at the time did physically assault her, she deserved it because she provoked people. Yes, those words left Sheree mouth. Sheree also called Kenya a liar and said that her ex-husband never did any of those things to her because Kenya said, how can you make a statement like that when you are a domestic violence survivor? Kenya was shocked. Like, shade aside, pettiness aside, how can you go that low when you are someone who survived this? And Sheree said Kenya was lying and never happened just for this moment to happen on camera and kenya and kenya did not say oh she just said those things to me the other day and i'm not going to say anything kenya stood up right away gave her a hug was there for her console her and and was talking back to bob calmly letting him know what he was doing and saying was wrong but you have to understand sheree was right next to him and yes there's a camera in here but sheree is still sitting right next to him so I'm not about to go off and do too much when Sheree is in the car next to this man who is within inches of doing something to her again. So I'm going to calmly respond to what he's saying, telling him what he's saying is not nice. I'm going to get up and give Sheree a hug and be there for her, but I'm not going to come at him in a screaming or aggressive manner because we are currently not in a safe environment because he's literally in this car with us. So when we get to a place where I feel safe and comfortable and I can address him and call him out, then I'm going to go in. But right now is not the time. So I'm going to calmly respond, let him know that he's very wrong while paying attention to Sheree and making sure that she's okay and giving her a hug and consoling her and all of that. So that move was perfect in that moment. And what did those very women in the van with Kenya turn around and do to her on the Miami trip? Yep, defended a man who was aggressive towards Kenya, Phaedra, Sheree, and the rest of them. The only person that stood up for Kenya Moore was candy and kenya never forgot that oh and then don't forget when sheree said that ross wasn't being aggressive even though he was and kenya moore stood up for the both of them because ross got upset that his wife wasn't quick with it and couldn't keep up with the girls at the table so he jumped in to defend her and it didn't matter if he was a white man in that moment he was aggressive you're aggressive and then there they went trying to run with this narrative of there goes kenya calling a black man aggressive again if a man is purple blue green whatever and he's aggressive he's aggressive the same thing goes for women now i am aware of the narrative of people calling us black people aggressive but in that moment it wasn't and it was so disgusting that every time someone is wrong they run with that narrative towards kenya and federal parks did the same thing with the guy from miami and when i tell you social media did not play with her because how dare you use innocent black boys being murdered by police officers as an example for a man who's clearly being aggressive towards a woman so let's get into these comments love how kenya was supportive of sheree but didn't sheree blame kenya for how men treated her can't remember the season but it was when they were all outside and kenya did the duck walk same season love I love how Kenya came to Sheree's defense. But yet, when a man tries to get physical with Kenya, they all blame her. Exactly. Kenya is a lot of things, but she will defend her castmates. Right while Phaedra sat there with a slight smirk on her face. Only to then say that Kenya out of her and blaming Kenya for the Miami situation. This scene is what made me like Kenya. I was so fired up and mad in that episode. Sheree herself even charmed in. 
the girls hate Kenya, but she is a girl's girl. Always, even when she doesn't like someone, she stands 10 toes down and advocating for women. One thing about Kenya I always respected is she will for sure stick up for women when it comes to these men. Example, Drew. After spending the previous season mocking Kenya, throwing, I'm a wife, I'm married, and you're going through a divorce in Kenya phase, who stood up for her against her husband the next season? It was Kenya so much so that even Drew felt like Kenya was doing too much and needed a backup, even though Kenya was defending her. I was just about to say that people always pin Kenya as a B, but she was super supportive to Sheree. She also supported her when the convict left her sitting at the table in Philly. Shira knew that man wasn't coming, but she had to give Bravo something. She had to create a storyline. Now, Kenya didn't know any of this. So who was on the phone with her? Yep, Kenya again. And what did Shira do after that? Shaded Kenya again because she's always on the wrong side, on the wrong team. And that entire side of the couch was fired. Oh, and I almost forgot this one. Who stood up for Sheree and, of course, herself to Sheree fake storyline boo? Yep, it was Kenya again. She thought it was she as in Phaedra. Thought it was funny. I guess because she's been violent herself. She, I'm going to say allegedly, cut Apollo back in like 2012 and used to put hands on him. Ooh. I love how Kenny called them out on their ish for that. I don't know what people say about Kenya. She is a real one. She has her ways as everyone does, but she is worth having as a friend. Yeah, I was happy Kenya came to her defense. That was hurtful and he thought it was funny. Now I'm thinking about how Kenya was afraid of Matt and his temper. Wow, yes, he was crazy. Matt was beyond unhinged, his girlfriend after Kenya had filed a restraining order against him. Of course, it started nice like most relationships, okay? Even helping her with more manner and build and all of that. But then it got terrible, breaking her windows and people still blame Kenya. But you heard me read that comment. Not Kenya, but his ex-girlfriend. That means another woman after Kenya how to file the restraining orders. And I will never forget reading the comments, oh my God. And what's weird is it took this situation for some people to leave comments on the blog pages that reported it. Oh my goodness. So Kenya was telling the truth. So this man breaking her windows and being aggressive wasn't enough. You had to see him going to a different relationship and someone else filing the restraining order to believe her. And I normally do not include his images. It's been years since I have, but we have new people here. And I'm just adding context that Kenya was in a relationship with someone where everything was great at first. And then it just got disgusting and terrible. And I'm glad she was able to get out of that with her life. And stupid women, including some of them on this cast, justify him and the other lady's nephew getting aggressive with her. Kenya was very sweet in this clip. She stood up for Sheree and comforted her. It looked like she was really concerned and protective over her. It was nice to see because that man is demonic. He was so scary. I was so glad when she got away from him. Definitely unhinged. He was a psycho. She was really scared. My homeboy was in the Navy with Matt. He's been crazy a long time and not just with women. Oof. Yeah, Peter had a switch blade on him. Not do men even like women at all, like serious question. I appreciate Kenya energy. Kenya stood on business and I applaud her. Kenya stood on business and I applaud her for that. If it was not for Kenya being in the car, I think he would have tried to hit her again. Hit her as in Sheree again. Kenya don't play that ish. We would have jumped him right there. Literally, this is the man that causes women to snap and end up in prison. Love how Kenya took up for her and supported her in that moment. For Sheree to turn around and attack Kenya saying she provoked Matt to do the abusive things he was doing to Kenya. Every day, they show me why I stay to myself. Shaking my bleeping head. It's true. The fact that he even said that on camera shows that he really doesn't care and that's disgusting. I'm glad she got away from him 
with her life. I don't care, but y'all can never make me hate Kenya. She always was vocal when it counted. She didn't play by abuse and violation of women. She's a real girl's girl. Yes, and then when she gets knocked down or hit like the reunion, that one year they try to make her the bad person. Shaking my head, it's unfair. She seems like she's had to fight all her life. For real, Kenya, we appreciate you, girl. You are seen. Yes, she is. Aw, sure is. Agreed. Right, even if she had to stand alone. I just said this. Whether she's cool with you or not, she don't play about domestic violence and she will speak up. Exactly, Team Kenya. Facts. Yes, I always felt her energy during those moments and real girl's girl. Never, never, never. <laughs> I don't care. I'll forever love. She tagged Kenya Moore hair page. She's a real one. She was looking like, mm, excuse me, am I the only one processing what this N word is saying? Love the way Kenya didn't back down. Hate that Sheree even had to deal with this. I don't care what you say. Kenya is a girl's girl, no matter what. She truly is. As much ish as we can talk about Kenya. She's always the main one to speak up against abusive men, no matter if she likes you or not. Never made a joke that I can remember. India doesn't get enough credit for supporting Sheree and standing up for her in this moment. As someone who has seen through Bravo bias editing and been calling out Bravo for years, since Kenya Moore joined the Real Housewives of Atlanta, I've been defending and supporting Kenya Moore it always makes my heart smile when people can give Kenya her credit. So there you have it. Kenya, thank you again for being an incredible human being and sending up for people even when they will never do the same for you. Also, Cassie, we are all praying for you and your family. I'm wishing all of you well and take care. We got Kenya in Brooklyn on vacation. Check y'all out. Is that a Brooklyn Bridge behind you? Oh, it's just <laughs> Thank you all for your love and support. If you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up. Also, turn on notifications so when I do post, you're ready and post it. And I will see you all in the comment section. Remember to always have the God bless attitude, which is being positive at all times and seeing the good in every situation. Have a great day, guys. God bless.